Thank you, New York Assemblyman Steve Engelbright for joining us today on Green Amendment Day. And I wanna congratulate New York that because of your leadership is actually going to be the first state in the modern era to advance Bill of Rights protection for environmental rights um, and advance a bill that's going to go before the voters of your state this coming November, which is very exciting. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. So I'm wondering, Assemblyman, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to run for political office, how long you've served, and any highlights for your tenure, other than the Constitutional Environmental Rights Amendment that you'd like to bring forth? Well, I first ran for office at the county level for the county of Suffolk here on Long Island. And uh, uh, I was uh, very interested in uh, drinking water protection and uh, the large woodland watershed uh, in the central and eastern part of our county called the Pine Barrens uh, became the focus of an effort uh, to preserve that uh, water, pure water source. Uh, that took about 10 years and uh, we uh, advanced uh, the largest county level open space program in the nation in order to help uh, preserve as many parcels as we could. Uh, that's an effort still going on. And I've carried, as I ran then uh, a few years later uh, into state office, I've carried uh, a, a similar mission forward to protect uh, drinking water and protect the public health uh, throughout the state. So in addition to that, right? So that that's really interesting talking a little bit about your history. Can you also talk about um, what are what are overall your primary concerns when it comes to the environment um, as you serve today as an assemblyman? Well, the biggest issue is a global issue, uh, which is climate change. Uh, never before have we seen uh, anything like this in, in uh, human history, where uh, the climate and the weather are both changing. Uh, in uh, the direction of increasing, increasing drought, wildfires, uh, sea level rise, ocean acidification, uh, all of this being driven by uh, combustion of, of fossil fuels and the release into the atmosphere of the two major greenhouse gases, CO2, carbon dioxide, and CH4, methane. Uh, those two uh, greenhouse gases need to be abated. And uh, we have uh, taken uh, very strong steps in that direction in New York uh, with the leadership of Carl Hasty, our speaker of the assembly, uh, strongly uh, supporting uh, this initiative. Uh, we've put forward and made into law uh, the strongest state level uh, uh, greenhouse gas uh, uh, antidote, if you will, uh, in the form of legislation uh, to be found anywhere in the nation. And uh, that is certainly the top priority. Other things that follow from that, of course, uh, sea level rise uh, threatens to drown some of our coastal cities. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, deal with climate change so as to not completely uh, flood uh, the coastal parts of our nation where half of our population lives within 50 miles of the coast. Um, and in New York, uh, the World Economic Center is in Manhattan. Uh, during super storms uh, that uh, we've had in recent years, we've had people uh, drown in their first floor apartments in lower Manhattan. And we certainly don't want Wall Street to be underwater uh, as the financial center for our nation and uh, the world. So these are uh, all very, very important and are part of uh, the same issue. Uh, similarly, a lot of uh, drinking water uh, issues that brought me to the legislature continue to be a high priority uh, going forward. So that's really a great segue to the next question. Can you tell us a little bit about how important a healthy environment is to both New York communities and to New York's economy? Well, I think that it is absolutely bedrock uh, important. Uh, 
uh, to have a clean and healthful environment. Uh, because uh, certainly uh, in New York, uh, as well as in our sister states, uh, to a very large extent, uh, the environment is the economy. Our economy suffers if we degrade uh, the environment that we all are a part of and depend upon. So uh, it is very, very important to be attentive to uh, the public health implications of maintaining a clean and healthful environment. And so uh, it is axiomatic that uh, the uh, Green Amendment that we're working on uh, uh, be passed. Uh, we've put it before the voters. We're asking them to vote in their own best interest and the best interest of the people they care about uh, and their families. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we will also use this as an opportunity to educate the public as to uh, how the empowerment that they will have uh, by having this new right uh, will translate into um, a better uh, quality of life. And so um, why did you decide in the first place to champion the passage of a New York Green Amendment, one that recognizes and, and protects the rights of the people to a clean and healthful environment? Well, you just heard how important I believe it is for the environment to remain predictable and nourishing and uh, a source of, of good health and ultimately of uh, a high quality of life. Uh, and yet uh, when uh, the state was founded and when our nation was founded, um, the idea of protecting the environment uh, was really not a focal point. Uh, science had not yet been invented. Uh, we didn't really have uh, people, uh, uh, very many people, uh, uh, notwithstanding that uh, Thomas Jefferson was a scientist and uh, Benjamin Franklin was a scientist, but in the, in the modern sense of uh, whole institutions that uh, transmit that knowledge forward in time, your know, universities in particular, uh, uh, those didn't exist in, in the form that they do now. And so we, we stand back and we look at uh, the march of time and the uh, increased awareness of the reality of how important it is to focus on the environment, to protect the environment in order to protect ourselves, to protect our economy and the well being of everyone who we care about. And it becomes apparent that we need to do an amendment in order to catch up with that new reality. It's not so new. Uh, science uh, is, is now uh, more than 200 years old uh, in, in our nation. Uh, interestingly, uh, I'm a geologist by training. The geological sciences began in New York to a large extent in this country, uh, in Albany. And so I find it fascinating to go uh, to the State Museum and look at the early collections and realize that uh, we have a strong tradition in New York. So, of course, um, that tradition of uh, learning and passing the meaning of that learning on to the next generation is something that the legislature should be involved with as well. So, and to those who say that environmental rights don't belong in the Constitution's Bill of Rights alongside speech, property, gun, and civil rights, what would you say? I would say, please take a look at, uh, at uh, how important a, a clean and healthful environment is to our daily activities. And then place that into the context of our uh, larger understanding of what negative effects, uh, when the environment degrades, uh, what those negative effects translate into. Uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is the goal. You don't do that if you have large portions of your population diseased from breathing contaminated air uh, or injured from uh, having only uh, contaminated water to drink. Those 
are important protections that rise to the level we now know uh, of uh, the continuation of our society and the great experiment in democracy that is our nation. And so um, it is a bedrock uh, reality that we need to add to uh, our constitutional document protections for these very, very important variables. And one final question. What can and should people be doing if they're in, interested in advancing the New York Green Amendment? What's, what's your advice to them now and in November? Well, this is an opportunity to share what you know. So if you have already studied uh, the issue and you understand how important it will be for and as of right for every citizen to uh, grow up and and uh, be prosperous uh, because the environment uh, is supportive of that prosperity. If you believe that, share that concept with your friends, your family, get the vote out. We're going to need people to also write letters to their weekly newspapers and to their electronic media to share that message and, and, and share it widely with the goal on election day of registering your vote in the affirmative. And the affirmative for a clean and healthful environment and an optimistic future for uh, uh, your family and loved ones and indeed for our entire society in New York State. I want to thank you so much, Assemblyman Englebright, for your tremendous dedication to securing environmental protection and justice in New York. And I want to thank you for your leadership in advancing the New York Green Amendment. New York wouldn't be in this moment if it wasn't for you. Well, thank you very much. We're close to the finish line. So we'll celebrate uh, after we get our vote out. And uh, by the way, uh, this is the first uh, statewide amendment of two that is so important because just a year from now, uh, we have another opportunity to invest into our future, which is the State Environmental Bond Act. One at a time, first the Green Amendment, and then a year later, uh, another opportunity to share knowledge and invest into our well being uh, in the form of the Bond Act. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.